Hey guys, it's the beginning of the week, which means all the sportsbook lines are out and our sportsbook projection tool on dailyfantasywinners.com is updated. So at the beginning of every week, I like to take a look at the highest point projection teams from this tool and just look at it, see what I see, and just and just use it for some preliminary thoughts on things. So right now what I'm going to do is just organize this by the teams with the highest point projections. So if we look at the top, the team with the highest point projection right now is New England, who's projected about 32 points. Now to put this into context, this is probably top 10 of any team at any week this season. So this is a really, really high point projection. So obviously when you think of the Patriots, you're going to think of a couple guys. You're probably going to think of Tom Brady, who's at 7,800, and Rob Gronkowski at 7,700. But actually what catches my eye this week is the Patriots have a really high point projection, and they have a lot of guys who are really, really cheap. Um, that being said, if Julian Edelman bet is back, this might throw a wrench in these plans. But if he's not, you have guys like Danny Amendola, who's 5,700, Brandon LaFell, who's 4,500, uh, Keyshawn Martin, who's at Min. And then you even have these running backs with LeGarrette Blount out. You have James White, who's basically playing the Deion Lewis role and, and doing pretty well at 4,600. Then you have Brandon Bolden at 3,200, who's who's going to take over for LeGarrette Blount. So basically you have a few guys who are in a really potent offense who are going to get a lot of looks and who are really cheap. So I like them quite a bit. And actually, come to think of it, if Edelman does play... I think that Edelman Brady is actually a sneaky stack because people are just going to be wary about playing him with uh, just him coming off of an injury. But with the Patriots projections do so well, and if we think Edelman's going to come back and, and play 100% of snaps, I think they'll be really under owned. So that's just one team and players from the team to think about. Um, and then we're just going to look at the highest run and pass point shares. So run point share goes to Seattle, um, and they're projected to score 29 points. Now, Thomas Rawls is out for the year, and so this gives us this strange situation um, where it looks like that the Seattle running back is probably going to be Bryce Brown, although he isn't on in the player pool so i hope they add him but if they don't we're not going to be able to use that him and uh the running game is basically going to be worthless i i don't think fred jackson is probably going to get more carries or anything but he might get a few but he's probably just going to play the third down back role and so but i do actually think that Rawls's absence upgrades russell wilson a little bit because without a really good red zone runner like Rawls. Wilson will probably have to do more in the red zone, and that's going to be more running touchdowns, more passing touchdowns for him. So Wilson obviously seems like a really strong option, and then obviously his, his guys, Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett, and even maybe Luke Wilson at 2,500. I'm going to have to do a little more research here, but I think even though Wilson hasn't done very well, if he's getting number one tight end snaps, I think it's possible he could have a breakout game. So someone to keep a look at, but Seattle's offense obviously seems quite, quite good. And then if we go to pass point share, uh, if we look at the second best, aside from England, we have Arizona. And this is something that I have seen that I really, really love because one, Carson Palmer, 7,000. He's one of the best quarterbacks in football right now. And he's in a really awesome matchup against the Eagles. And I think give someone to pair him with that's going to be really, really juicy is Michael Floyd, who is only 4,400 and plays outside receiver for Arizona. And I, the Eagles corners right now are really, really bad uh, on the outside. I think Floyd continues with a really great performance and he's only 4,400 and he's a really great GPP play because he is kind of boom or bust and, and runs a pretty, uh, high A dot, he, he gets started way down the field. So Floyd with Palmer is a pretty cheap stack, which I think has a ton, ton of upside. So that seems like a really, really good uh, play. 
Lastly, I'm just looking at all the point projections here, and one thing I'm seeing is there are a lot of different options. Um, there are a lot of teams with pretty high point projections and could really go off. And what that makes me think of is be wary of guys who are going to be over-owned because right now, instead of the normal, you know, 10 games on Sunday when we had buys, we're now back up to uh, full 13 games on Sunday. And because of that, there's a lot of different games. Scoring is going to be up. And especially on a week when there's a lot of good matchups like this one, if you end up over-owning one guy, you're end up, going to end up limiting yourself, even if that player seems really, really good. So I would just say keep on the lookout for guys that just seem to be to be used just too much this week. It might not actually end up happening because there's just a lot of quality options. I think people will spread it out. But if you see someone you project at 30 or 40% ownership, be wary of using them because... It might not be the best plan this week when there's just so many options. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, please like the video, click the thumbs up, or subscribe to Daily Fantasy Winners, and you'll be alerted when there's more content. Um, have a good week and good luck.